Hi, Manahunt community. This is Miss Hogan here. Um, I've been hearing about a lot of students that have been doing their reading, who have been doing math, who have been checking JoJo. Um, and I've also been hearing about a lot of students who have been safe, who have been kind, respectful, and responsible. And those are all things that we at the Manahunt School value and we teach. And we hope that all of our students are continuing to do our core expectations while they are at home. Um, I want to read a little book to you today, and this book is all about strong feelings. Um, while we were at school, we talked a lot about um, everybody has feelings, and it's okay to have feelings, and sometimes feelings are strong, sometimes they're small, and that different people react to different feelings in different ways, and all types of feelings are okay. Everybody has feelings. Everybody gets sad. Everybody gets angry. Um, what we are working on is trying to control our reactions and thinking about when you are angry or if you are really sad that you're not doing hurtful things, um, that you're calming your body down and making sure that you're making safe, responsible, kind, and respectful choices even when you are having those feelings. So today I want to read this book to you and it's called When Sophie Gets Angry, Really, Really Angry. It's written and illustrated by Molly Bay, and you'll notice that in this story, Sophie gets angry, and I want you to think about the choices that she makes, um, that even though when she's upset, what does she do to calm herself down instead of doing or saying hurtful things? So when Sophie gets angry, really, really angry. When Sophie gets angry, really, really angry. Sophie was busy playing when her sister grabbed Gorilla. My turn, she says. No, said Sophie. Yes, said her mother. It is her turn now, Sophie. As her sister snatched Gorilla away, Sophie fell over the truck. How do you think Sophie is feeling? Oh, is Sophie ever angry now? She kicks, she screams, she wants to smash the world to smithereens. That would be a hurtful choice. She roars a red, red roar. Can you tell how Sophie's feeling in this picture? Sophie is a volcano ready to explode. And when Sophie gets angry, she gets really, really angry. Can you tell by her face how mad she is? Do you see that the illustrator is showing us with her pictures how mad she is? Pictures and her words. When Sophie gets really, really angry, she runs. She runs and runs and runs until she can't run anymore. So instead of getting mad and using words or saying or doing hurtful things, she decided to take some space, which is a helpful choice. Then for a little while, she cries. Now she sees the rocks, the trees, and ferns. She hears a bird. Sometimes when you're feeling angry and you're looking to have some space, I know a lot of my students will look around the room and look for colors. They can count, think about things that they can hear, something to reset their body so you're not thinking about how angry you are or how upset you are, but you're able to think about something else to help calm your body down. She comes to the old beech tree. She climbs. She feels the breeze blow her hair. She watches the water and the waves. So she took the time to slow down and think about things that she was seeing, which helped calm her body down. The wide world comforts her. 
Sophie feels better now. She climbs back down and heads for home. The house is warm and smells good. Everyone is glad she's home. She's saying, I'm home. Can you tell how Sophie's feeling now? She's now happy and everyone's happy to see her. She was able to take some space, calm her body down, and then rejoin the community, go back to the group. Everything's back together again. And Sophie isn't angry anymore. I know at school, a lot of people have spaces within their classroom that the students can request and go and take some space. Um, they might call it a cool down nest, they might call it a break space. Um, but my challenge to you is to think of a place, just like Sophie, but I want you to think of a place that's inside of your house. Where is a place that you could go when you were having some strong feelings or if you needed to take a break or take some space? And before we left school, my students and I created a list for you of different ideas and different things that you could put in your own cool down space at home. So some of the students um, suggested things like you should have some books because books can help you reset your body, reset your mind. Pillows so you can hug them, squeeze them, take a little break, lay down. Um, we thought that a blanket would be something nice to have in your cool down space to help you cool down. Um, some sort of visual or steps for breathing. I know in kindergarten, our three steps are to stop. You put your hands on your tummy. Um, you put your hands on your belly and you name your feelings. So you can say, I feel frustrated. I feel angry. I feel sad. I feel disappointed. So first you stop, then you name your feeling. You really think about how you're feeling in that moment. And then your third step is to calm down. So some ideas to calm down would be to take some deep breaths, making sure you're breathing in through your nose, holding it and breathing out through your mouth. Nice and slow and steady. Some of my students like to count, so you could count. Um, or even doing some self-talk, saying, I can do it, I'm okay, I can calm my body down. Um, some students suggested having tissues, and you're having strong feelings, um, sometimes you're sad and you want to cry or um, tissues would be a nice thing to have in that space. And then the last thing we thought of was some sort of calming toy. So Play-Doh would be great, a stress ball, something to squeeze, even a pillow. Um, so that is my classroom's challenge to you is to think about where in your house could you create a little calm down space and even if it's just a spot that you know that if you're feeling upset that you can go sit, relax, make sure your body is calm to make sure that you're making safe, kind, respectful, and responsible choices instead of doing things that are hurtful. Um, so that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this story. I would love to hear about the cool down space that you create at your house. Feel free to email me at khogan, H-O-G-A-N, to at bostonpublicschools.org. Thanks and stay safe.